zoomed in and I might come out. Tigre and I are here at the Pratt Whitney Canada exhibit booth in MBAA base. And we have the pleasure to find Robert Peluso. Not only is he an amazing engineer, um, part of the team at Pratt & Whitney to design these engines, but we found out that he ended up designing the, many of the engines that we've flown on the 600 series. For example, the 610 on the Eclipse, 615 on the Mustang, and we've done some flights on the Premier with a 617. So we asked him to kind of help us go through this engine because we're always fascinated by it. So, and Robert has a full right to interrupt me if I make any mistakes whatsoever <laughs> because he's I'll into... try not to. So here we have the N1, right? This is the intake for the fan. The blue areas are typically the cooler temperatures in general. Here you have the stators, which are fixed veins, right, to direct the flow of air. In this particular case, this is the, the stator for the bypass going on the outside, and you can see that. And so it, it does a couple of things. It slows it down, right, Robert, a little bit, and then and it smooths it out. It, it tends to align the flow, and it also uh, converts flow to, it converts the pressurized to static pressure, so it slows the flow down. Effectively. Just like if you're, air hitting it really fast, you want to slow it down so it at a certain speed so it can be uh, intake. So in through here, we come along here, there, there's concentric shafts. So you've got the N1 section here, which includes this fan, as well as you can see the shaft and going all the way in the back, the last two. Power turbines, so those power would be turbines. the power turbines. Power turbines. Hi, Tigre here. I just wanted to chime in because when Rob is saying that that's the power turbine, in the back, it's also known as the low pressure turbine. There's probably multiple names for it, depending on who's making the product. But in general, as you can see in this illustration slash animation of a two spool high bypass turbofan, that back chunk, the part that's in teal, that is what he's referring to with those two power turbines. That is also known as the low pressure turbine because as I was editing this, I was getting confused based on what I had learned before. And in a simplistic state, that front section and the back section, the very aft before the inner um, nozzles exhaust, where A is, that seven section, that three and that two, those are all low pressure. And then the high pressure, the places where the air is getting compressed, and is really dense so that it can create more power to spin that N2 turbine, which is the high pressure turbine number six, that is moving at that clip of about 30,000 revolutions per minute versus about 10 to 12, maybe 15 on the lower pressure sections of the low pressure section. Hopefully that gets it to become more clear. Um, there's a lot that goes into these engines for sure. And this is a very simplistic diagram, but you can see in general what's going on with this animation. All right, back to the guys. Compressors are on your front end. So those power turbines, right? Yeah. And those are axial. These are axial and they are driving. They are effectively doing the work to drive the fan. So when we first go to hit ignition, and the plane starts to start with our starter, it turns that section. These, this section. The core will always light up first. We'll get stable combustion going in the compressor. And if you notice as pilots, when you're looking right. at your gauges, you will have your NH spooling up, and then you will see your N1 sitting at you know very low speed until your engine starts approaching idle and you'll see a ramp up on your low spool. Because on the ground, we don't have the air basically going in unless we have a headwind. So we have to start the ignition here, burn the fuel to get that started, to turn the N1 we will section start. and get that rotating, right? Exactly. Okay, and then as it rotates and as it accelerates, then... More air will be drawn in. Drawn in there and, draw, and goes in through the sections. You see part of this, so you see the bearings down there and some of those, see the bearings, they have little holes and that's for the oil distribution as well. And those bearings in through there, right. I'm assuming, we're assuming. And then these, as we come down through here, this then would be, this is a, it has two axial. High pressure compressor high pressure right stages. Here. Okay, yep. and then this would be our centrifugal. Correct. And this and is. The, that yeah. assembly is driven by the single stage high pressure turbine 
this one here. Right and down so the stream of the combustion. Then the yellow is where our fuel is burned, correct? Right. We can see that we have um, fuel nozzles coming in yeah. on the side sheet of little bent tubes. And there's a bunch of those around that entire right. combustor. So we go around the entire circumference of the combustor. The air will come out perpendicular off the compressor stage will make its way around the combustor and start to be injected. So the fuel will come in in this way, the air will come in perpendicular and you will have the flame propagation uh, in the combustor can. And to get the engine when you first start, when you use igniters, we are excited, or the, right. they're powered through this system right. and through here and you can see the nozzles there. And typically the igniters are only on during start or if it's a FADEC engine, right, either. automatically, or in some airplanes, when you turn on the de-icing system, Correct. they'll put on on. But normally in a FADEC engine, you don't have to touch it after the start. You just put them into normal for the most part. Correct. Now, then, I will point out something for your sharp audience. <laughs> this mock-up, the two spools generally counter-rotate. In this mock-up, you're actually seeing them co-rotate. So some of your avid audience and the knowledgeable audience will point out that the compressor is not spinning in the right direction there. That's accurate. Well, I was going to ask him when like all my experience is that one wrote they're, Yeah, they're counter rotating so that they balance that torque, right? Is that how it works? And well, it's just the more optimum. Uh, it's design. sometimes it's a more optimal aerodynamic arrangement for maximum well, that's good. efficiency. The bleed air pressure that's used to power other components such as any pneumatics, et cetera, pressurization, where does that come off of? Well, so these are basically handling bleed off takes. Those won't go to pressurize um, uh, other aircraft systems, but you will have bleed off takes, which- uh, Help reduce like yeah. a compressor so stall your, or something? Uh, a cabin bleed is an example. There's one labeled there. Oh, you there can it is. See that. And so it comes out through this Correct. port basically on the top. So pilots, because we have to be real simple, where do where when we see an ITT gauge on the aircraft in the on the EIS engine information system display or otherwise, where do we where what temperature are we looking at? Is it back here? We will if it's the true definition of inter turbine temperature would be in between the high pressure and the low pressure turbines. Some on some engines it might be a very difficult um, region uh, due to the the conditions to measure. So we may actually take measurements in the exhaust stream and back calculate, you know, based on calibrations that we do during development to what that inter-turbine temperature actually is. Sure. And ultimately the inter-turbine temperature that the pilots use is really a way for us to establish the peak operating temperature in the engine, which is coming out of the combustor and going into the high pressure turbine state. That's what we certify to. That's what we're effectively trying to control to in the field. We do it using the inter-turbine temperature okay. as a proxy. That's great. It was great to me. It's really great to meet you. It's really fun. I mean, we, we love, obviously we're very passionate about airplanes and we always love to interact with the people who actually build the airplanes and the engines and the tires and so forth. It's a huge community, right? As pilots, we just have the benefit of sitting up there eating snacks and flying at 45,000. We haven't done all the hard work of designing them. So thanks again. Thanks My again pleasure. for your time. It was really enjoyable. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.